Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Senators have one more day of questioning, setting the stage for a possible witness vote tomorrow. Good morning, I'm ABC's Megan Tavrizian on Capitol Hill. We'll have those details coming up. How soon do we need that umbrella? It's chilly out there yet again. Looks like we have a little shake to our camera here in the downtown area. We'll get updated with Mike Osterhage momentarily. Good morning to you. It is Thursday, January 30th. Thank you so much for being with us this morning, everybody. Yeah, you definitely need a cut. It feels a little bit colder to me today than it did yesterday. And we're talking a chance of rain, or at least you were yesterday morning. Where are we at with that as of right now, Mike? Not great. What uh, happened? Well, it's just, it's not really materializing into <laughs> It's easy. Um, I heard it gets tough to make my chicken and dumpling soup. I'm ready for the rainy, cold day. Well, it's, it's going to be cold and it's going to be kind of dampish, you know, with all the humidity out there. And there will be a couple of showers around, but it's not going to be a huge, uh, huge chance of rain today. There are a couple of showers this morning also, but if you just want to make chicken and dumplings and, you know, bring in leftovers, go for it. Yeah. Don't let anything go to waste. Anyway, um, looking outside, yeah, it is a lot. To, it does feel a lot colder this morning just because we got some extra moisture out there as well. 45 in town, 30s in the hill country, uh, 44 in Hondo, 43 in Divine. And yeah, we do have a little bit of a wind chill to deal with. Feels like 32 in Kerrville, 41 here in town. Winds out of the northeast at about uh, 5, 10 miles per hour. They're a little bit uh, stronger just a, a half an hour, hour ago or so. Here's what's going on as far as rain. And yes, there is some rain out there and we will have a couple of showers, but obviously it's very kind of few and far between very light scattered stuff. Most of it is down here to the south and this batch of rain will continue to work its way off to the northeast. So when it's all said and done throughout the day today and early tomorrow, the majority of everything is going to be down here to the southeast. That doesn't mean the rest of us won't see a shower. It's just not a great chance of rain. Molds on the high side, mountain cedars on the high side as well. We will stay in the uh, low 40s throughout the rest of the morning. Couple of showers are possible. Not a great chance of rain, but a nice warm breakfast. And then what was it? Chicken and dumplings? Chicken and dumplings later on today. Sounds really good because the high temperature of only 50 today. Cloudy skies and very chilly conditions. Did I just hear we have to go to a break right now? Or do you want to do traffic? Let's host, let's let's go to traffic. Or maybe not. Hey, welcome back. It's 437 right now. We want to give you a heads up on something that's going on here at KSAT 12. No major emergency, but we're having some huge technical difficulties. So we're trying to rectify those issues so that we can bring you a complete newscast. So please bear with us. We're going to take another quick break as we fix these problems, but we'll be back. We're going to circle the wagons, regroup, and we will be back. All right, we are cobbling together a newscast best we can here amid some uh, major technical difficulties, but it's good to see you on this uh, Thursday morning. Technology is a wonderful thing when Isn't it works. It? When, when it, it works. It's a problem. Uh, we're having trouble accessing our video right now, which is the real problem. That does not mean we can't give you information, though. We're going back to the basics, and we've got Nick <laughs> And Mike, and standing Mike by. Standing you guys there. are about to tag team WWE yeah. style. <laughs> yeah, they say computers are like cars. They're great until they, they until don't they don't work. work. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And, Is there and, any way know. to feed coffee directly to our computer servers? Something <laughs> like that. Anyway, we just did a quick weather update earlier, and uh, this is the only graphic we have right now. But speaking of cars, want to get updated. Uh, anything going on with traffic? Yeah. Thanks, Mike. So when I was coming in today, I was going down I-10 eastbound. It looked like uh, there were some construction crews that had the uh, Fresno exit closed down in the right lane of I-10 eastbound uh, shut down as well until you hit Hildebrand. Talk to my buddies at Transguide who said that they're cleaning the drainage ditches right now. So expect a delay if you're heading that way. They just opened up 1604 eastbound at Hebner Road as well. That was also closed down. So it seems like all other places around the city, there's some construction crews going on today, but it all should be cleared up here in the next uh, 20 minutes or so. But if you are going down eastbound I-10, expect a delay. Okay. And did you see any damp spots on the roads this morning? I didn't. No, I, I okay. didn't, Mike. I didn't actually. It was very cold this morning. I told you when I came in. Man, weather's it, cold. It, it smells like it wants rain. It feels like it kind of does. And again, we've got these temperatures that are very cold out there. We've got wind chills to deal with. Bundle up. Um, I don't know if you necessarily have to warm up the car at all before you head out this morning, but we do have those winds coming in here out of the northeast, so that makes it feel a lot colder. Now, as far as rain, we do have a little bit showing up on radar, so this may add to, you know, maybe some damp roads as the morning rolls on. As you can see, everything is kind of sliding off to the northeast right there. We've got these few scattered showers 
out in uh, portions of the hill country right now. Nothing is showing up on radar, but uh, again, like we were talking about, if we do get any of these uh, light little showers, it's not going to be, it'll be just kind of the nuisance sort of rain if we get anything this morning. And that I think is going to be the situation throughout the rest of the day. And then down to the uh, south and um, Right along 35, we've got a couple of those showers. That's moving off to the northeast, so it's all said and done most of it down there. So he's going to be on the lookout for any problems on the roads. It, once we do, if we do start to get a couple of showers around here, uh, of course, we do have some mold and some mountain cedar going on. And again, throughout the rest of the morning, a couple of showers are possible and 43 degrees. So it's still going to stay very cold. And one of those days where 50 cloudy, humid, a shower or two sneaks down the back of your neck. Unless he's going to be serving up chicken and dumplings. Oh, I can't wait. Everybody here. So, so since we have technical difficulties, just run home, make it, and then bring it back here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, Leslie, Mark. Scratch. It uh, takes guys, a long time. Mike, what's it like to do a tire weather cast with your own personal bodyguard? <laughs> I like, I know, this is, this is kind of neat. I feel so and important. Who's Whitney Houston and who's Kevin Costner? Well, that's easy. That is easy. Yeah. Mike's um, Whitney Houston. Mark's definitely, Mark, you mean Mike. Huh? Mike's definitely. Uh, Hi, Mark. I know. I thought that? you said you said Mark. Mike. You meant Mike. Did I? Yeah. Okay. We're confused enough with all the technical difficulties. We're gonna break. We're gonna be back. I'm gonna think about chicken and dumplings while we take a break. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do that. Welcome back, everybody. Your time now is 4:46. New this morning, San Antonio Police and Crime Stoppers are seeking the public's help to identify the suspects involved in a murder from 2011. According to police, 40-year-old Daniel Mezzo was murdered at the Valencia Apartments in the 7800 block of Callahan Road on the northwest side. Now, police say they were called to the location for a robbery. Officers arrived and discovered Mesa in an apartment suffering from severe head trauma. If you have any information leading to the identification or location of the suspect, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers or SAPD. In your other morning headlines, the Senate will resume asking another round of questions as the battle over witness testimony heats up in the Senate impeachment trial. ABC's Megan Tabrizian is on Capitol Hill with the latest. Pressure is mounting over witness testimony, and at the center of the debate is former National Security Advisor John Bolton. I'm no fan of John Bolton, although I like him a little more than I used to. Um, but you should hear from him. You should want to. Attention on Bolton fueled by his unpublished book that reportedly claims the president withheld aid to pressure Ukraine to investigate political rival Joe Biden and his son. Republicans pushing for a speedy end to the trial, saying if the Senate votes to have witnesses, they have a list too. I want Adam Schiff. I want Hunter Biden. I want Joe Biden. I want, I want the whistleblower. The president attacking Bolton on Twitter, calling his book nasty and untrue, and sending Bolton's team a letter claiming it can't be published in its current form because it contains top secret information. Today, attention turns to those key moderate Republican senators who could clear the way for new witness testimony, asking the first question on Wednesday. On behalf of myself, Senator Murkowski and Senator Romney, their question, what if Trump had multiple motives for his pressure campaign on Ukraine? And if a president does something which he believes will help him get elected in the public interest, that cannot be the kind of quid pro quo that results in impeachment. Going into the second day of questioning, sources tell ABC News Senate Republicans believe they have enough votes to stop new witnesses from testifying, but the situation remains fluid. Megan Tavrizian, ABC News, Capitol Hill. American Airlines now the second U.S. carrier to cancel some flights to and from China following the coronavirus outbreak. The airline announcing it's shutting down two routes to Shanghai and Beijing. United also announced it was suspending some flights between three Chinese cities. So far, more than 130 people have died and nearly 6,000 have been infected by the coronavirus. Right now, there are at least five confirmed cases here in the U.S. For the first time in four years, the life expectancy in the U.S. has gone up. While the increase is small, just about a month jump, the rise is mostly due to lower death rates for cancer and drug overdoses. The calculation is based on the 2018 year, and on average, an infant born in 2018 is expected to live about 78 years and eight months.
Both silver black won their game last night against the Utah Jazz. DeMar DeRozan scored a season high 38 points. Patty Mills with 18. DeJounte Murray with 16 points. San Antonio held on for a 127-120 victory over Utah, snapping a three-game losing streak. A much-needed win for our Spurs. UTSA, now the first university in the nation to implement the Tracy Rule. The rule bans students with histories of serious misconduct from participating in ath athletic programs. It's named after Brenda Tracy, a sexual assault survivor who shares her story across the nation. When asked how this would be enforced, UTSA said a survey would be used to learn more about prospective and current student athletes. There will also be a committee who will review student cases, but the new rule does not require universities to conduct background checks. UTSA has always said, uh, says while it's always expected coaches to recruit higher character student athletes, the Tracy rule formalizes the process and extends responsibility on the students. Now to a recall alert that you need to know about. Four companies pulling their infant sleepers, according to the Consumer Product Safety Commission. The commission says the recall is to prevent risk of suffocation. and other manufacturers' products had infant deaths reported for inclined to sleep products. The recalls include Swaddled Me by Your Bed Sleeper, Inclined Sleeper, Graco Little Lounger Rocking Seat, The Pillow Portable Napper, and the Delta Enterprise Deluxe Inclined Sleeper. Just a reminder, the Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive happening this Saturday right here in San Antonio, and there's still plenty of time to get tickets to the KZAC Corral. Each ticket comes with breakfast, seats for the parade, and many other activities the whole family can enjoy. Again, the Cattle Drive this Saturday, February 1st from 9 to 1. For tickets, head on over to ksat.com slash insider. The deadline is here for the mother of two missing Idaho siblings ordered to bring her children to authorities today. ABC's Will Reeve has details in your GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, a fast approaching deadline for a cross-country missing children case. Where are your kids? Lori Vallow facing a deadline this morning to physically produce her missing kids and bring them to authorities. Vallow's children, 17-year-old Tylee Ryan and 7-year-old JJ, haven't been seen since September. She and her husband left Idaho in November under suspicious circumstances, bolting one day after authorities conducted a welfare check looking for the kids. After other family members contacted authorities, concerned that they hadn't heard from them. Vallow and her husband Chad Daybell were last seen Wednesday in Hawaii. Police tracking them down this weekend, serving them with a court order, while cameras from East Idaho News rolled. Where are your kids? Coming up at 7 a.m., former U.S. Marshal Lenny DePaul weighs in live on this unusual case. With your GMA First Look, I'm Will Reeve, ABC News, New York. If you've ever experienced a prolonged power outage, you know a generator can be a lifesaver, but if a generator isn't used properly, it can also be a killer. 12 on your side's Marilyn Morris on what you need to know about carbon monoxide poisoning. Headlines like these seem all too common. The Consumer Product Safety Commission says from 2005 to 2017, more than 900 people died of carbon monoxide poisoning while using portable generators. A generator should never be used inside or even in a doorway of an enclosed space. To reduce the risk, some new generators feature a built-in sensor that triggers an automatic shutoff if CO gas builds up to dangerous levels in an enclosed space like a garage and some portable models are now designed to emit less CO in the first place. Consumer Reports tested five portable generators with automatic shutoff, all passed. Each manufacturer uses a different name for their CO shutoff system. So if you're shopping for a new portable generator, look for terms such as CO shield, CO sense, CO guard, CO protect, or CO detect. Consumer Reports recommends these models. This Ryobi generator not only has automatic shutoff, but has low CO output. This DeWalt portable also got excellent marks for power delivery and maintains its voltage. And this Generac has good power quality and a helpful fuel gauge. All three have five power outlets and will run for 8 to 17 hours on one tank of gas. Any generator should be placed at least 20 feet from your house, never indoors, even with the door open. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News.
Good morning, everyone. Officer Nick Solis here. Uh, we do not have any accidents out there right now. A lot of construction, but that's all been cleared out here in the last 10 minutes. So expect a smooth commute to work if you're heading that way. Let's take a look outside at the Trans Guide. 1604 in Hebner. This is where we had that construction. Things are looking very clear there. We also have 35 in Loop 410. That's looking very light. And uh, let's see what else we have here. 37 at Jones on the east side is also looking very smooth. So not much going on right now, and that's always good news. All right, Mike's here as we cobble, cobble things back together for our newscast. Uh, grab a jacket before you head out the door this morning. Um, I don't know if you're going to need an umbrella today. Maybe hang on to it just in case. But we do have a couple of showers, a uh, few of them out there in parts of the hill country. Very, very scattered. We'll have a few light showers here and there. More of this rain is down here to the south. And this is where the majority of the rain is going to be throughout the day, as well as the first part of the day tomorrow down here in the southeastern part of our uh, viewing area along the, the coastal plain. Temperatures right now are in the 40s. And then we do have a wind chill to deal with right now with uh, about the 30s and even to, well, might see some upper 20s for wind chills later on this morning and throughout the rest of today. Temperatures are going to really not move all that much. We got this cloud cover. We've got the, the damp conditions out there, a lot of humidity as well. And still, I'm going to mention a shower today. Not very likely, though, 48 at noon and only going to make it up to 50 later on today. So it is definitely going to be a bundle up sort of day with a cloudy skies. And again, a shower or two is possible. We will have clouds starting off tomorrow and then some sunshine in the afternoon. We, it's going to be another chilly start tomorrow and we'll make it up to 61 degrees. And then with some clear skies tomorrow night into Saturday morning, it is definitely going to be cold. 38 degrees here in town. And then 65, it's going to be a beautiful day on Saturday. Actually, I think it's looking a little bit nicer uh, for Saturday in the afternoon as far as more sunshine than clouds. Cold again um, on Sunday morning. No, it will not be 520 degrees starting off Monday morning. We're going to be wow. in the uh, 50s, yes. That's why you have to check your work, kids, before you turn it in. And a couple of showers are possible Monday. And I think we got a very strong cold front coming by the middle part of next week as it's looking as of right now. All right, thanks, Mike. Mm -hmm. Right now it's 456, 45 degrees. The Girls 2020 International Piano Competition this week, right here in San Antonio, it's hosted by a nonprofit, Musical Bridges. Still ahead on GMSA, what the CEO of the nonprofit says about the organization. David Sears with a recap of the Spurs win last night against the Utah Jazz. Details coming up right here on GMSA. Thanks for your patience. Live from Chase at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. The Senate impeachment trial continues today with another round of questioning. Democrats and Republicans fighting over calling witnesses to testify. Go Spurs, go. The Spurs win a game, ending a three-game losing streak. Our David Sears has reaction. And outside with live cam, clouds and chilly 45 degrees at last check at San Antonio International Airport. What about those rain chances? Mike does have an important update for all of us. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday. It is January 30th. I bought everything to make a nice soup for the rainy cold, and now the rain's going to stay away. But Mike says that's okay because Still leftovers can come here. <laughs> I no, 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 I didn't say it wasn't going to rain. Just some rain chances are not that great. It's going to be a cold, a damp, cold day. So, yeah, uh, grilled cheese and soup sounds really, really good today. Nice big uh, hot bowl of oatmeal because we've got some cloudy skies out there. And, again, these temperatures are in the, uh, the 40s and 30s right now. About the same numbers as what we had at this time yesterday. We do have a little bit of a breeze. So we do have somewhat of a wind chill to deal with. But, again, we've got those clouds, and there is a little bit of uh, some rain showing up as of right now. So we've got the 40s and 30s. Then you factor in uh, wind chill temperatures down to 33 Kerrville, Lost Maples, uh, 36 in Honda is what it feels like, and Balverde, it feels like 38 degrees. We've got a decent breeze still out of the uh, northeast and um, enough of a breeze today. Plus, you know, temperatures yesterday we made it up in the low 60s. Going to be about 10 degrees cooler than that today, again, thanks to the cloud cover and some of these light showers. So we do have some light showers showing up. It's just not going to be a, a huge rain event at all today. Uh, here's a couple of these scattered showers out in portions of the hill country kind of sliding up to the northeast. Haven't seen anything on uh, on radar in and around town as of yet. Didn't see anything driving into work, 
nobody here saw anything driving in. You may see a little sprinkle here and there. So just to maybe allow yourself a little extra time. More rain down to the southeast, and this is where the majority is going to be as we go on through the rest of today as well as tomorrow. Mold Mountain Cedar are both on the high side, and as far as today, just uh, Cloudy, staying cold, only 50 for a high temperature, maybe a shower or two. And tomorrow we'll have some clouds in the morning, some clearing in the afternoon. Nice warm up up to 60. Weekend looks fantastic. Cold mornings, really cold 30s starting off Saturday. More sunshine, though, and we'll get up to mid 60s Saturday, 70 on Sunday. A few more clouds around here, but overall, I think another nice looking weekend. Details coming up. Time saver traffic right now. Here is Officer Nick Solis. Thanks, Mike, and good morning, everyone. Hope you're having a great start to your Thursday morning. Well, no accidents to report uh, as of right now, and all the construction that was there around 430 is now cleared up. So if you are on the way to work today, expect a smooth commute. Let's take a look at some drive times. If you're on 1604 eastbound from US 281 to I-35, it's nine minutes. And if you're on 1604 westbound from I-35 back to US 281, eight minutes. Great times there. Taking a look outside at the trans guy 37 and Jones looking very good right now. Very light traffic there on the southeast side of town. US 2 doing at 410 at those flyovers looking very moderate as well or not even moderate light and 281 at Grayson looking good and a nice little view of downtown there. Well, hope everyone has a great day. Mark Leslie back to you. Thank you, Nick, very much. Police are asking for the public's help to find a murderer in a case from nearly 10 years ago. Sarah Coast is live downtown with what police know about this homicide. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Leslie. And nine years later, police are still searching for clues to help them find the killer responsible for the death of Daniel Meza. Police believe it was a robbery that went wrong that led to the death of then 40 year old Meza. Police say they were called out to the Valencia apartments on the 70. 7800 block of Callahan Road on January 9th back in 2011. Police say it was almost three in the morning when this happened. The call was for a robbery, but when officers arrived, they found Meza in the apartment with major head trauma. He was taken to the hospital, but died the next day from his injuries. Crime Stopper says they will pay anyone who comes forward with information that leads to an arrest. You can do this by calling the Crime Stoppers tip line at 224-STOP. Remember, if your information leads to an arrest, you may be eligible to earn up to $5,000 in cash. Live from downtown, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Leslie. Thank you, Sarah. U.S. Border Patrol San Diego sector said Wednesday the longest illegal border tunnel along the U.S. to Mexico border was found back in August. It starts in Tijuana and ends in an industrial area half a mile west of the Ote Mesa border entry, 4,068 feet from the border. The tunnel exposed after a multi-year investigation. San Diego U.S. Border Patrol agents are calling it a high-level narco tunnel. I met an unpublished book from former National Security Advisor John Bolton. Democrats maintain that Bolton's account could not be ignored, and they've pushed to have him testify in the Senate impeachment trial of President Donald Trump. Yesterday, Republicans appeared focused on bringing the proceeding to a vote for acquittal in a matter of days. And the vote for calling witnesses is expected to happen on Friday. Great news, Spurs fans, a much needed win for the Silver and Black. They beat the Utah Jazz at home last night at the AT&T Center. The final score, 127 to 120. Our David Sears has a recap. Once again, the Spurs stepped up to the challenge of playing one of the better teams in the West. The Jazz actually started the night in third, finished the night in fourth, thanks to that loss. The Spurs have been talking consistency for weeks now. They played with consistency against the Jazz. It was tough. You know, we buckled down. You know, we executed when we need to, got stops when we need to, and got buckets when we need to. Yeah, we came out here and beat a really good team. And, um, you know, that just shows the kind of team we can be with consistency. Obviously against the teams with, you know, less record, uh, worse records than the good teams, I feel like we just not, we don't come ready to play. And, uh, you know, obviously versus good teams, we're ready to play from the jump. So we just got to figure it out, you know, before it's too late and, uh, you know, get on it now. Now it's just a matter of continuing that consistency against Charlotte and taking it on the road with them on that rodeo road trip. With the Spurs, David Sears for Good Morning San Antonio. 506, 45 degrees. A rock band is hitting the roads after taking a nine-year break. Plus... 
Did you know that there's an international piano competition happening right now in San Antonio for free this week? Good morning, I'm Sarah Acosta. In just a bit, we'll tell you about the Guritz Piano Competition. And live cam giving us a peek outside. So happy to have you with us on this Thursday morning. It's Friday Eve, everybody. We'll be back. Music is oftentimes called the universal language. It's why the local nonprofit Musical Bridges Around the World uses music to share cultures and fine arts with local students. This week, the group is hosting a free piano competition in San Antonio with renowned pianists from many different countries to raise money for their cause. Sarah Costa spoke with the founder about the importance of inspiring the community through the arts. Yeah, music is an international language. It, it it transcends um, anything that divides people. It, it speaks right to your heart. Music is our main medium, which we work with to connect people. Anya Grokowski is the CEO of the nonprofit Musical Bridges Around the World. She founded the organization 22 years ago in San Antonio, raising money to educate local students and the community with music and culture. Our mission is to transform lives uh, through music, through cultural diversity, through the arts. We'll bring people together from different cultures. We believe that education is very important, so we reach over 50,000 children annually through our educational programs. The way we are, humans, we're afraid of what we don't know, and so we don't want our children to grow up being afraid of other cultures. This week, Musical Bridges is hosting the Gerwitz 2020 International Piano Competition, where 12 of the best emerging piano talents from around the globe will be competing for a grand prize of $25,000. The majority of these performances are free. And you can find all that information about those performances right now on ksat.com. Coming up on GMSA, we speak with one of those contestants about her love for playing music. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Lovely story. Mm -hmm. Just now, 512, 45 degrees. An old movie thriller that's become a, that's gone viral due to the coronavirus outbreak. More coming up on GMSA. You ready for the Super Bowl commercial that has Game of Thrones fans talking on social media? That is next. I always thought it was me that I was the reason all these diets never worked. This is genuinely not a temporary fix. There's some serious psychology behind it. It's funny how much smarter I feel like new has made me. It, it's the simple things. Once I understood why I was making those choices, it was easy for me to change those habits and weight loss came naturally after that. I've been on Noom for four months now. I've lost 27 pounds and I feel like I got my life back. Visit Noom.com and lose the weight for good. April 18th is National Pinata Day, but you don't need to hit a paper mache unicorn to get stuff you want. Just become an AARP member, get health tips, learn about the latest tech, have nights out at local restaurants and more. Get your AARP membership today. T minus 10 seconds to crispier, fluffier, Eggo homestyle waffles. We are go for lift off. Now that they're crispier and fluffier. I think this one's a solo mission. I understand. Would you Lego your Eggo? 515, welcome back on your Thursday morning. Time for a look at perfect restaurant scores from around the Alamo City and best of behind the kitchen door. And this hour's grouping, we have Bill Miller Barbecue at 620 Division. Congratulations, folks. Popeyes, 8842 Petranco Road, moving right along on our perfect scores this morning. There we go, we can advance. Snooze AM Eatery, this is the one out there at 1305 North Loop 1604 West. We also have Panda Express, 11,000 block of Ebner Road, right there off of I-10. And finally, we have Betos Comida Latina, 8142 Broadway, also receiving a perfect score from the Metropolitan Health District. If your place got a perfect score in the last 30 days, send me a picture of the front of your latest inspection report. You can send that to bkd at ksat.com. We have more perfect scores coming up in our 6 o'clock hour. Right now, it is 516. Leslie? Thank you very much, Mark. I love Hi. those perfect scores. Well, Apple has lost a lawsuit worth more than a billion dollars, and two companies are coming together to test the use of self-driving vans to transport packages. Kenneth Moten and Janae Norman have your details in today's Tech Bites. 
In today's Tech Bytes, Apple ordered to pay up. Apple and the technology company Broadcom have been ordered to pay more than $1 billion to Caltech. A jury found the companies infringed on the university's patents for Wi-Fi transmissions. UPS is set to deliver self-driving vans. The company is teaming up with Waymo on the project. Autonomous Chrysler minivans will take packages from UPS stores around Phoenix to a facility in Tucson. The vans will have drivers on board. Test runs start in a few weeks. And two pop culture phenomena are joining forces for a Super Bowl commercial. Game of Thrones star Maisie Williams belts out the hit Frozen song, Let It Go, while driving Audi's new electric car. The company and the commercial doesn't say exactly why she's singing Let It Go, but the exhaust fumes and gas stations give a hint. Mm -hmm. Those, Those are your tech, tech bites. bites. 17 minutes past the hour. Time to check the roadways and see if all that construction has been picked up yet, Nick. It definitely is, Leslie. No construction out there right now. That cleared up here about 30 minutes ago and no accidents to report. So we're off to a good start here on Thursday morning. Let's take a look at some drive times. If you're on 35 from the city of New Braunfels to 1604, 15 minutes. And if you're on 35 southbound from loop 1604 to downtown, 12 minutes. Great time there. Traffic is starting to pick up a little places around the city, though not on 10 days of all. It looks good there, but uh, it is starting to pick up. I saw 10 in Dominion, 151 and 410. So there you go right there. Traffic starting to pick up just a little. Uh, 10 in Callahan East, um, looking still very good. And 10 in Frio inbounds and outbounds is uh, looking good right now as well. Thank you, Nick. Okay. As far as your soup today, mm -hmm. still go with that. I that, am. That's still, okay. I am. I already got the stuff. I'm, but, it's, it's happening. But it, it is going to be one of those days that's good for, you know, a nice warm bowl of soup, grilled cheese, something like that. It's just probably not as much rain. But it's still kind of that dampish cool out there. We're only going to be at 50 today. So, okay. yes, it is good soup weather today. I think he's trying to get right. you over the hump of your, your disappointment about it being. About it not being. It's not going to be like rain. a big, huge rainy day. Yeah, Couple I mean, of we'll, showers out there, Leslie. We're all here for you. Anyway, we can count on you, Leslie. Uh, we're getting a lot of clouds out there. I don't think the sunrise is going to be anywhere near as beautiful as what it was yesterday. Speaking of some rain, yeah, there is some as expected. It, uh, you know, as time has gone on over the past couple of days, it's just looking like it's going to be less and less as far as uh, aerial coverage. And I mean, we've got a couple of little spots out there in portions of the hill country. We may start to see a few of these showers uh, as the morning progresses and even later on this afternoon. Obviously, a larger area of rain in our southeastern county. So this is heading in toward three rivers and will continue up to the uh, northeast. So uh, right around K uh, Karn City, watch out for that a little bit later on this morning as that progresses up to the uh, northeast. 37 right now up the road toward Bernie, 30s out in the hill country, mid 40s, about the same temperatures as yesterday. And right now we're uh, four degrees above normal, but we do have wind chill to deal with. And not only we've got those winds about 10 miles per hour, so 5, 10 miles per hour, a little bit breezier over there toward Hondo, but it's that damp chill. Yesterday we didn't have as much humidity out there, but today the humidity is definitely around with the cloud cover, so that's why it almost feels colder this morning because that damp air sort of sneaks down the back of your neck, it seems like. So everything is coming in here. The overall flow is coming in surface winds out of the northeast, but the overall flow is coming in from the uh, southwest with all the moisture from the uh, Pacific Ocean across the mountains of Mexico. So this will all continue to feed in here. And again, the main path is basically there to the uh, southeast, which is what this computer model pretty much indicates. So we do have a couple of scattered showers around throughout the rest of today, but not much. Uh, to be honest, it's it's just going to be a cloudy, cool day, not necessarily that wet with a couple of those showers. But then, as you can see, more of that moisture continues here, even along the, the coastal plain and out in toward the Gulf of Mexico. And we will be clearing out somewhat by tomorrow afternoon. And then we go into Saturday and it's looking even better, you know, as far as rain looking less and less for today. But I think Saturday's uh, looking better as far as more sunshine than clouds. But it's going to be a really cold start Saturday morning. 48 degrees today at noon. And again, a shower or two is possible today, mainly down to the southeast. 50, that's all we're going to be able to muster. So it's going to be definitely a uh, chicken and dumplings kind of a day today. <laughs> hint, hint, hint. Tomorrow we have clouds in the morning, perhaps a leftover shower or two down to the southeast, and then some sunshine in the afternoon. 61 for a high temperature. We'll clear on out. It's going to be 38 degrees here in town starting off Saturday morning, and then a nice warm up. We get up to 65, and uh, yeah, more clouds on Sunday. But uh, I think uh, we'll have a fair amount of sunshine as well. Cold start, then we get up to 70. Still looking at a uh, another 
Right now, it looks like a fairly strong front moving through by the middle part of next week. So if you are wanting to come downtown, join us for the uh, Western Heritage Parade Cattle Drive, the KSAC Corral. Bundle up. Well, I'll be bundled up and ready to meet everybody, so come on down. All that good cowboy cooking. We had a sample of it yesterday on the you show. You did? What'd you have? Oh, oh, my goodness gracious. What is it? What? I'll, I'll tell you, yeah. So. What, are you not going to tell us? No. Well, we didn't have what he actually he's going to be serving. But what did you have? We had, um, it was, they called them um, pork uh, popsicles because it's a little bit of a pork shank on a bone right there. And that was so good. And then stuffed jalapenos Ooh. and made a um, little Dutch oven peach cobbler. Chicken and uh, dumplings. Same guy cooking it. on Saturday. 522, <laughs> 45 degrees. I had on GMSA a new remake of a horror-themed 1970s television series is coming and appropriately on Valentine's Day. <laughs> We're going to rush through your lottery numbers here. Pick 3, 926, Fireball 4, Daily 4, 8430, Fireball 9. And your cash five numbers are 3, 18, 24, 28, 29, Lotto 17, 27, 31, 47, 49, 52. And your Powerball numbers, what is that up to, like the 700 million? Down to 40, oh, somebody, somebody won. Oh, somebody won. Yes. I hope I know them. 9, 12, 15, Powerball's 31. 40. Oh, yeah. We just said that. 60, Powerball of 2, Power Play of 2 as well. Welcome back, 525. The coronavirus having an interesting effect on our culture involving a nearly decade-old movie. Rick Damagella has that story and more in our Hollywood Minute. So we have a virus, no treatment protocol, and no vaccine at this time. Contagion goes viral. Deadline reports the 2011 thriller jumped into the top 10 on iTunes movie rentals charts on the heels of the coronavirus outbreak in China. The movie follows a virulent disease originating in China, which turns into a global pandemic. Contagion grossed over $136 million during its original theatrical run. Congratulations to each of you on winning the contest, and welcome to Fantasy Island. Here's your look at the final trailer for Blumhouse's Fantasy Island. The horror-themed remake of the 1970s television series stars Michael Pena as Mr. Rourke and features guests' fantasies turning out much different than they bargained for. The plane lands February 14th. Music news, welcome back to the Black Parade. The recently reunited My Chemical Romance is hitting the concert trail. The Newark, New Jersey Rockers have announced its first U.S. tour in nine years. The tour kicks off in Detroit, Michigan in September and wraps up in Las Vegas in October. Tickets go on sale Friday. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. 527, 45 degrees. Here's a look at what's coming up in our next half hour. It may be the middle of the night, but the staff at this place says they always have loads of fun helping to air out other people's dirty laundry. The goal is for everything to come out in the wash or in the dry cleaning process. Cowboy Cleaners has been handling both for more than 40 years. Inside two buildings on the city's north side, staff members get to work in the middle of the night. They help to get clean clothes back to their customers within 24 hours or less. I spent just a couple of hours with them. I'll show you how they make the clothes make the man and woman in the latest while you were sleeping. Good morning. You are waking up on a Thursday, January 30th. Glad to have you with us this morning, everybody. This close to Friday. How's traffic looking? It's looking really good. Uh, no accidents to report, and the construction has cleared, so we're off to a good start. Mr. Osterhage, how are we looking on your side? It is cold out there this morning. Temperatures are about the same as what they were yesterday, but don't let that fool you because we've got clouds and there's more humidity, mm -hmm. so it's just, you know, as I say, it sneaks down the back of your neck kind of, uh, kind of chill out there. A couple of showers are possible. There's not really a heck of a lot showing up on radar as of right now and about the same situation later on today with a shower too possible but then look at that high temperature it's gonna stay cold that's it 50 degrees grilled cheese and soup kind of weather definitely look outside with live cam right now and visibility is pretty good we are going to have uh, <coughs> excuse me not have, I should say, as uh, nice of a sunrise as what was the case yesterday. Again, these temperatures are almost the same as I said uh, from yesterday with the wind chills down in the 30s. Feels like 30 right now. Lost Maples, 32 is the wind chill in Kerrville. Winds out of the northeast at about uh, uh, 10, maybe 15 miles per hour. Yes, there is some uh, rain on radar right now, but 
that's in the immediate vicinity. That's about all we can uh, squeeze out. Just those few little light showers there. Another larger batch of rain, which is sliding basically to the northeast. So this is going to be moving through three rivers right across 37 there and then heading in toward Carn City. And this is where the majority of the rain will be. We've got all this moisture flow coming in here from the uh, Pacific Ocean. It's kind of staying kind of hugging the coast, if you will. Moles on the high side. Mountain Cedar was on the high side of yesterday's reading. Of course, the updated count is going to be coming out at about uh, 7 o'clock this morning morning tomorrow. Not bad. Some clouds in the morning, then we'll start to clear on. And I think the weekend is looking actually a little bit better than it was looking a few days ago. Details coming up in a couple of minutes. A good January weekend and February weekend too. time saver traffic right now. So no problems on the roads, huh, Nick? Yeah, everything's looking pretty good right now, Mike. Uh, no problems out there. Construction's cleared up. If you're heading to work right now, expect a very smooth commute uh, right now. So um, we do have a stalled vehicle right here at I-10 at the Y. Got to find out what direction that's going. I'll call my buddies at Transguide right now, but just be very careful there. It's there in a very, very bad spot. If you're heading this way, take caution. Looks like that vehicle is right there, halfway on that right lane. So I'll keep you updated and advised on this stalled vehicle. Mark, Leslie. Thank you, Nick. New this morning, San Antonio Police and Crime Stoppers asking for your help in identifying the suspect involved in a murder from 2011. Police say 40-year-old Daniel Meza was murdered at the Valencia Apartments in the 7800 block of Callahan Road on the northwest side. Police responded to a robbery call. When they arrived, they found Meza in an apartment suffering from severe head trauma. If you have any information on the case, or location of the suspect, you're asked to call SAPD or Crime Stoppers. Today, the World Health Organization is meeting to decide whether to declare a global health emergency due to the coronavirus outbreak. Overnight authorities in China confirm more than 7,700 cases, and we're now hearing from some of the Americans evacuated from China. ABC's Kenneth Moten has the latest. This morning, back on American soil, but a long way from home. It felt great to get back to the States. Patrick Stockstill, his wife and young son, were on board the flight that evacuated nearly 200 Americans from Wuhan, China, ground zero of the coronavirus outbreak. When we first stepped on board, my jaw dropped. I've never seen a plane set up like that before. It was a wide open cargo plane, but had passenger seats in it. And honestly, it felt like something out of a movie. Crews wearing protective white suits greeted the passengers as they landed at this military base in California. Stockstill's wife was forced to leave her family behind in China. I didn't have a choice and I feel so bad that they're still stuck in China. Meanwhile, the number of cases now growing worldwide, with at least 170 deaths and more than 7,700 people infected. All but 68 of the confirmed cases are in China. Airlines around the world are not taking any chances, suspending or scaling back flights to and from China, including Delta, American and United. And Tesla is the latest company to close a facility in China because of the outbreak, shutting down its factory in Shanghai until further notice. As for the stock stills, they'll be quarantined until at least this weekend at that military base, along with the rest of the passengers, before they can finally head home to Rhode Island. I asked the first customs guy, I saw where's the nearest U.S. soil I could kiss. Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. In your other morning headlines, the FBI raided a local branch of the Kingdom of Jesus Christ Church in Los Angeles after an alleged immigration fraud scheme that resulted in fake marriages. According to police, the church flew members from the Philippines to California under false pretenses, then confiscated their passports and made them beg for donations to the church's charity. Three leaders were arrested. An Amber Alert is in effect in Florida after a one-week-old baby boy was taken from a house where three generations of a family were found dead on Tuesday. According to Miami-Dade police, the father of baby Andrew Caballero, Ernesto Caballero, was the one who took the baby. Yesterday, police in Pasco County found Caballero's vehicle and shortly afterward found him dead from a gunshot wound. In about four more days, thousands of Iowans could make or break a presidential hopefuls campaign. The Iowa caucuses are coming up this Monday. But the latest polling shows the majority of Iowans haven't made a decision yet. CNN's Nadia Romero has more from Washington. New this year, satellite caucus location so that more people can participate. And every voice will count. A new Monmouth University poll shows Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders are neck and neck, making Iowa just too close to call. Iowa caucus goers, who do they want? We just really need somebody that we can trust in the White House. 
2016 Bernie Sanders supporter Tim Hughes is back again. He hasn't lied. It's been the same Bernie for 40 years. Andrea Wickstrom says she'll caucus for Joe Biden. Right now, I think the top three candidates are Joe Biden, um, Bernie Sanders, and Amy Klobuchar. And Jenna Weiss for Amy Klobuchar. She is honest. She's kind of no frills. Um, I think she speaks the truth and she's a tough cookie. Well, on second thought. I like Joe also, so I could vote for Joe too. Maybe some of the millions of dollars worth of campaign ads will help some caucus goers make a firm decision. Bold vision for the next generation. That's why she's visited all of Iowa's 99 counties. And across Iowa on Monday, caucus goers will huddle in churches, libraries, and schools. They'll hear a final pitch from a candidate or surrogate. Then One, two, they'll three. physically get up and get into groups depending on who they support. They'll have a chance to convince others to join them. Finally, a vote. It's an old fashioned and quirky way to come to a consensus. And it might be more important than ever this time around. I'll listen to what they say um, because their opinions matter to me also, and they'll ask my opinion. But with too. a large pool of candidates and an unusual system, who will break away with the win in Iowa is still anyone's guess. I'm not confident of anything anymore. To make matters even more confusing in Iowa, that new poll shows that most Iowa voters think that Elizabeth Warren is the most likable candidate. But when they were asked who they would caucus for, they put her in fourth place. In Washington, I'm Nadia Romero. 538, 45 degrees. Ahead in this morning's edition of While You Were Sleeping, we're going to take a look at what happens overnight at a local dry cleaning company. Outside with Live Cam Thursday morning, grab a fresh cup of coffee. Yes, I got you less. We'll be right back. There's a phrase can be traced back to an ancient proverb that clothes make the man. If that's true, then the success of some San Antonians may be due to the hard work of a few who stay up all night to make their clothing look good. And this week's While You Were Sleeping, Katrina Weber takes us into the heart of one longtime local dry cleaning company. It's laundry day for Kirsten Thomas, but then again, every day is. The first of dozens of loads goes in shortly after 2 a.m. The time this self-described morning person arrives to work at Cowboy Cleaners. It just, I don't know, comes natural, I guess, but I take a nap in the afternoon. Before the sun is out, she's taking clothes out of the huge washers and dryers inside this building on the city's north side. Her job involves doing everyone's laundry, like a mom of sorts to customers from six stores. I'm more like the big sister. There's other people that are more like the mom. <laughs> Cowboy Cleaners itself is family owned, an environmentally conscious San Antonio staple for more than 40 years. As the name implies, dry cleaning also is a big part of what they do. It's garment by garment day by day. In George Andrews' case, it's actually overnight by overnight. When he arrives after 3 a.m., his work has piled up already. Still, he handles each item for dry cleaning. I'm going to hang that aside. As if it's the only one. It's our goal to make them look as close to brand new as possible that very same day. At an hour while most eyes are closed, they both have to keep theirs trained for any unsightly messes and make them disappear. While keeping an eye out for stains is part of the job, it's some of the other things that they find among the clothes that often comes as a surprise. Credit cards, driver's licenses, um, pocket knives. Lipsticks, you know, we found money. We've, if, if you have it in your pocket, over a course of time, we found it. Both of these longtime employees say they've also found their dream jobs here, doing them while others are in dream land. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. We appreciate our dry cleaners. More hardworking folks behind mm -hmm. the scenes here in the Alamo City. 543, 45 degrees. Here's a look at what's coming up next on GMSA. Well, here is a beautiful, beautiful blue-eyed kitty cat and a little nervous around TV studio, but oh, he is a lover. You're going to meet him coming up on Good Morning San Antonio. Well, a lot of times cats in TV studios, 
don't really mix too awfully well. <laughs> Perfect example. This is Squirt, and Winnie's here from the Animal Defense League. He's usually, you said, fairly calm, but again, this setting, not good for cats. Yeah, Squirt is a, a handsome, uh, blue-eyed, seven-month-old tabby mix and uh, he actually he's he's fun loving he loves to play with other cats and people and I caught him the other day running around he was playing so hard he was pant panting a little bit <clears throat> but we've all had that happen yeah exactly but he's a doll and he's he's a big guy for seven months old but he's just a love and uh, you know like all of us we we here especially this time of year we have little sinus problems and so does squirt it happens but otherwise he's really healthy he might need some eye drops every once in a while, but he would be a great pal. Oh, look, he's getting kind of used okay. to everything. Finally. All right. Yeah. So what, what you got going on? Well, we have some big news. Um, week before last, we were approved by city council to have uh, to start direct intake. And what that means. Oh, really? Yeah. And what that means is as long as we have the, the space, uh, people can come in if they, for some reason, need to surrender their pet or if they find pets on the street, they can take it directly to our ADL main campus. And uh, it's a $50 intake fee, but you know we are a true no-kill shelter, so the animal will be, sa will be safe with us, and we will find them their forever home. So instead of dropping it off at the city facility, yes. bring it straight to you. Absolutely right. Oh, that that's fantastic. All right, and then again, there's going to be a lot more dogs and cats out there and a lot more for adoption for Foster, including little Squirt here. And if you want to head on out to 11300 Nacogdoches, you can check him out. We're kind of on borrowed time. He's getting anxious. So are the Paul <laughs> Jolly Center across from the zoo. 655-1481 is the number to call. Thank you, Wendy. You're welcome. Interviews are never boring, are they? No, especially with cats. And that <laughs> big cat, I mean, seven months very, old. Very, very fluffy. He was, yeah, he was a, a big one, so. So she, he loves to play with the other ones. Oh, that's nice. Let's check on traffic real quick with Officer Nick Solis at 548. Thanks, Mark. Good morning, everyone. We just had a major accident come in on 35 North at off-ramp to O'Connor Road. Sorry, I was just busy trying to plot it real quick. This just came out right now. Looks like it's blocking the off-ramp to Judson. My friends at Transguide are gonna try to put it up on the camera, but right now I'll get y'all more information here when I can. Look, uh, we also have a disabled vehicle that I talked about in the last cut-in, eastbound I-10. Uh, it's the eastbound I-10 to the southbound 35. It's right there at that, that flyover from eastbound I-10 to 35 South. It's a VIA bus. Looks like SAPD is on scene there. Here it is in a very bad spot. That's very dangerous. Please use caution if you're heading this way. Once again, this is if you're on I-10 East, heading to 35 South, going back towards 90, starting there. This VIA bus is disabled. Please be very careful and use caution when um, going near this bus. And as well as far as the other accident, I will get y'all more, inf more information, but it looks like that one might affect traffic going northbound on 35. All right, we know you'll keep us uh, posted. Thank you very much, Nick. So, still a chance for some rain this afternoon, just not a deluge. No, no, it's, uh, the rain chances are not that great at all. It's down to the southeast is where you'll see more of it. We've got a couple of showers. There still will be maybe one or two of them around this morning. There's a couple of showing up on uh, on radar right now. I love this picture. This was from a couple of days ago, and oh my gosh, that is absolutely gorgeous. I love these great KSAT Connect pictures, so make sure you keep sending them in, please. Thank you very much for this one. And uh, as you can see, we've got lots of clouds out there, so we're not going to have the uh, the sunrise like we had yesterday. And yeah, we are seeing some rain, uh, most of it down to the uh, southeast, just cutting across 37 as of right now. Here's a couple little uh, sprinkly showers. Looks like one may start to move into southwestern Bear County. And uh, if that holds together, squeaking into the western side of Bear County, but obviously not much. One or two sprinkly showers are possible, and it'll be just enough to make the roads damp if we get anything this morning and then here's a little bit of light to moderate rain again down here to the southeast that's moving across three rivers Carn City perhaps uh, squeezing by Goliad later on in about the next uh, hour hour and a half 45 in town 42 Bulverde 30s hill country number wise roughly the same as yesterday but it sure feels a lot colder because we've got the cloud cover out there we've got a lot more moisture in the atmosphere as well northeasterly wind about 10 to 15 miles per hour so humidity compared to the temperatures is very very high We've got, what, 45 here in town, and the dew point is at 40, and it's going to remain uh, right about where it is throughout the rest of today, as well as the first part of the day tomorrow. Then, 
As we go into late tomorrow night and Saturday, notice how some of this drier air starts to work its way down in here. So with that extra shot of drier air coming in here tomorrow night into Saturday, that then is going to allow temperatures to really drop down. So we're looking at about the upper 30s to start off on Saturday morning, then nice big warm up throughout the day. So we've got this big flow coming in here out of the southwest across uh, the mountains of Mexico from the Pacific Ocean. And that's why, and as you can see how this is kind of scooting right there along the coast, that's why the majority of the rain, a lot of computer models are in agreement on this, is going to be down here to the southeast. We'll have a couple of those showers, you know, kind of scattered around the area. And that's about the extent of it. Again, mostly down to the uh, southeast throughout the day. Clouds starting off tomorrow, but then notice also again how the flow starts coming in here out of the north. So that's pulling in some of that drier air for Saturday morning. A couple of clouds hanging around here Saturday morning, and then I think a lot of sunshine by the afternoon. Today, not much sunshine at all. 48 degrees at noon, cloudy skies. Again, a couple of showers are possible, you know, here and there, and then uh, 50 for a high temperature. So that's all we're going to be able to muster today. About 10, 12 degrees below normal with a shower or two. Then tomorrow we start off in the 40s once again and some clouds, a little sunshine in the afternoon, so we'll make it up into the low 60s, close to normal. And Saturday, very chilly starts and then 65 for a high temperature. 70 on Sunday. I think we see a lot of sunshine on Saturday, a few more clouds on Sunday. And right now it's looking like a fairly potent front is going to be coming in here by about the middle part of next week. Good. We'll take it. Thanks. Right now it's 553, 45 degrees. Exciting news if you're a fan of Barbie after the break where you can check out a Barbie pop-up truck. Here are your lottery numbers. Pick three, nine, two, six, fireball four. Daily four, eight, four, three, zero, fireball nine. And your cash five numbers, three, 18, 24, 28, 29. And lotto, 17, 27, 31, 47, 49, 52. And powerball, nine, 12, 15, 3160, two is the power of ball and power play of two. Good morning. Coming up right here on GMA, the latest in the search for those missing Idaho siblings not seen in months. Now, today is the deadline for their mother to bring the children forward. Their grandfather will join us right here on GMA. New this morning on KSAT.com, a Barbie pop-up truck coming to the Alamo City. It'll be loaded with 90s themed Barbie merchandise. and It'll stop at the shops at Lock and Terra on February 8th. The truck will offer Barbie apparel and accessories, a limited number of denim jackets with Barbie logo patches, all part of a three-year Barbie truck totally throwback tour. We have all the details right there on our homepage. Check it out. Retail right now, 45 degrees. Some of the world's best piano players are here in the Alamo City. In our next hour, we'll hear from some of those pianists performing at the Gerwitz 2020 competition. Officer Nick Salise just sent out an alert about a major accident. He will tell you where and how bad it is coming up here at the top of the hour. You're watching GMSA. Senators have one more day of questioning, setting the stage for a possible witness vote tomorrow. Good morning, I'm ABC's Megan Tavrizian on Capitol Hill. We'll have those details coming up. Some of the world's best store in San Antonio this week for a world-renowned piano competition. We're going to tell you about the affordable free concerts you can see during the Gerwitz competition. Cold and breezy yet again, more moisture in the air. Does that equal a significant chance of rain? Mike has an update for everyone. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Just about to wrap up the first month of January. One day closer. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday. It's January 30th. Welcome to your Friday Eve, and it's cold. You're going to need a jacket again this morning and probably going to need to keep it with you all day. Michael? Oh, yeah. Oh, definitely so. 
nice warm breakfast, nice warm grilled cheese and soup kind of day today because uh, temperatures are going to be staying on the low side and we're not going to see any sunshine today and there's not going to be any beautiful sunrises starting off this morning. Lots of clouds out there. Visibility is good. Temperatures, uh, we are at 45 degrees, actually a couple of notches above normal. Number wise, it's almost identical to what we had around here yesterday. There is a little bit of a wind chill. 30 is what it feels like. Lost Maples, 34 Tarpley and 37 in Balverde. 41 out there at the airport and yeah we do have a couple of showers uh, obviously first notice that batch of rain down to the south there have been a few of them out in portions of the hill country but sort of fizzling out and maybe one or two little sprinkly showers kind of moving into town uh, the, if there is a light shower it's not going to amount to too much but just enough to make roads slippery so that's what you'll have to be on the lookout for and then this batch of rain which is cutting right across 37 heading in toward Carn city in about the next uh, half an hour um, basically light, maybe a couple of moderate showers. And this down here to the southeast is where the majority of the rain is going to be. Mold and Mountain Cedar both on the high side. A little bit of ash is showing up. And throughout the rest of the morning, basically all day long, temperatures aren't going to be going much of anywhere. Low 40s starting off. We'll make it up to... Oh, maybe about the uh, mid to upper 40s today at noon. A couple of showers are still possible today. Not very likely. Most of it, again, down to the uh, southeast. And I think that's all we're going to be mustering is 50 for high temperature later on today. It is going to improve. Weekend still looks fantastic. Cold mornings, beautiful afternoons. Details coming up. Time saver traffic right now. Here is Officer Nick Solis, and I just got the push on my phone about that major accident. Yeah, and ironically, there's two accidents, one on the access road and one in the main lane. So they're two separate accidents. I'd put that it had came out, uh, that one accident had was on the major main lanes and the access road. Turns out it's two accidents. First one being this major accident, northbound IH-35 north, uh, the access this road at Topper Wine. It's already the yellow already starting to slow down traffic right there, but it is on the access road. Then you have another accident just north, right before the Judson or right after the Judson exit, northbound I-35 North. The main lanes. It looks like uh, they have a whole right lane close. So if you are heading 35 North, expect a delay because uh, these two accidents are still very active. We still have this uh, disabled vehicle on I-10 uh, going uh, southbound to 35. It's a via bus that's stalled uh, use caution when going there. Here is a live look at that accident on 35 in Judson. So here's the one on the access road the uh, of northbound going to uh, 35 going to Topper Wine. So we have that there and then just north we have this major accident blocking all the main lanes. So sorry, I don't know if you can see by profile, but this is the access road and then there's the accident up there. Expect a delay and I'll keep you updated on this accident. Mark, Leslie. Thank you, Nick. New at six, a man is facing burglary charges after police found his fingerprint in a home. Police tell us this man you're about to see, 41-year-old Timothy Colbert, broke into a house back on December the 11th. They say he broke in through a window. He stole several items, but it was an item he did not steal that allowed police to catch him. Investigators were able to lift his fingerprints off of a CD that he moved while in the house. A lab was able to confirm it was his thumbprint, and police were able to arrest him. After a critically low blood shortage in South Texas this month, Key Saturn our community partners have come together to host a community blood drive. That blood drive hosted along with the University Health System happening now. Sarah Costa is live downtown with how you can do your part. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Mark, and you have today through Saturday to roll up your sleeve and donate. And what a great way to start the year by donating and saving a life. The citywide blood drive started on Tuesday and it's going through Saturday, like we said, and it's happening at University Hospital, which is located on 4502 Medical Drive. Know that one donation of blood, which only takes about one hour to do so, can potentially save up to three lives. Every two seconds, someone in the U.S. needs blood. Approximately 36,000 units of red blood cells are needed every day in the U.S. A single car accident victim can require as many as 100 pints of blood. Earlier this month, medical professionals feared they would have to cancel scheduled surgeries because of how low the blood supply was. And we don't want a repeat of that again, so you can do your part by taking part in our community blood drive happening today, tomorrow through Saturday. And you can just head to ksat.com to check out all of those times and the location of where you can donate. Live from downtown, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Leslie. 
Thank you, Sarah. 605, today the U.S. Senate will resume asking another round of questions as a battle over potential witness testimony continues. It's the final day of questioning before the Senate votes to hear from witnesses such as former National Security Advisor John Bolton. ABC's Megan Tavrizian is on Capitol Hill this morning with the very latest. Pressure is mounting over witness testimony, and at the center of the debate is former National Security Advisor John Bolton. I'm no fan of John Bolton, although I like him a little more than I used to. Um, but you should hear from him. You should want to. Attention on Bolton fueled by his unpublished book that reportedly claims the president withheld aid to pressure Ukraine to investigate political rival Joe Biden and his son. Republicans pushing for a speedy end to the trial, saying if the Senate votes to have witnesses, they have a list too. I want Adam Schiff. I want Hunter Biden. I want Joe Biden. I want, I want the whistleblower. The president attacking Bolton on Twitter, calling his book nasty and untrue, and sending Bolton's team a letter claiming it can't be published in its current form because it contains top secret information. Today, attention turns to those key moderate Republican senators who could clear the way for new witness testimony, asking the first question on Wednesday. On behalf of myself, Senator Murkowski and Senator Romney. Their question, what if Trump had multiple motives for his pressure campaign on Ukraine? And if a president does something which he believes will help him get elected in the public interest, that cannot be the kind of quid pro quo that results in impeachment. Going into the second day of questioning, sources tell ABC News Senate Republicans believe they have enough votes to stop new witnesses from testifying, but the situation remains fluid. Megan Tavrizian, ABC News, Capitol Hill. The World Health Organization will finally decide today if the coronavirus outbreak originated in China constitutes a public health emergency. If it does, member states would be obligated to respond promptly. So far, more than 7,700 cases have been confirmed in 19 countries. China reports 170 deaths, but the number is expected to rise. A new government report has found that U.S. life expectancy has climbed for the first time in four years. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention found that life expectancy in 2018 was 78.7 .7 years, an increase of two-tenths of a year. Researchers say a big factor for the jump, drug overdose deaths fell. Another contribution was cancer deaths dropped over the same time period. Right now, it is 608, 45 degrees. Apple is in trouble. See what technology the company is accused of stealing and why they are having to pay a university after a lawsuit. 12 contestants from six countries are competing in a piano competition this week in San Antonio. Good morning, I'm Sarah Costa. Coming up on GMSA, we'll introduce you to one of those contestants. Outside with live cam, we made it to Thursday, everyone. Not going to be a beautiful sunrise, though, because of clouds in place compared to yesterday, but that's okay. You're watching GMSA. We'll be right back. Six twelve this week, you can see world-renowned pianists performing free or very affordable concerts right here in San Antonio. It's for the Gerwitz 2020 International Piano Competition. The nonprofit Musical Bridges Around the World is hosting the competition with 12 contestants from six different countries. It's part of the group's mission to expose culture and music to local students and the community. Sarah Costa spoke with one of those contestants about her love for playing. Stein is one of the top emerging pianists in the world from Russia. The 31-year-old made it into the final 12 competitors in the Gerwitz 2020 International Piano Competition. Uh, I was five, which is a pretty common age uh, in Russia for um, kids to start. Her love for playing the piano started when she heard her older sister playing an iconic Chopin piece. <laughs> this one and I loved it and I thought oh I will play this pretty soon. The week-long competition is being hosted by the nonprofit Musical Bridges Around the World. CEO Anya Gorkowski says the organization's goal is to expose students and the community to music in different cultures. Our mission is to transform lives uh, through music, through cultural diversity, through the arts. We'll bring people together from different cultures. 
It's exactly what the Guritz competition has done. Anna says while staying in San Antonio this week, she met a 14-year-old pianist that she connected with instantly through the universal language of music. It's amazing that we can understand each other with those people so well. Sometimes you cannot understand, uh, you cannot feel uh, this close to someone from your own country. Despite beating out over 70 contestants to land a spot in the Gerwitz competition, where the top winner takes home $25,000, Anna says she still plays for fleeting musical moments. Sometimes um, there are these wonderful moments on stage when you feel connection with audience or you just feel like you play for everybody or for nobody, you just play. The competition will run until Saturday, being the final night at the Tobin Center with three contestants and the honorary chair is David Robinson. You can find all this information right now on KSAT.com. For GMSA, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, that's terrific at the Tobin Center. Let's check on the roadways and see if you have any traffic trouble spots. I know we had like 35 at Judson earlier. Yeah, Leslie, if you have to go to 35 North or going towards uh, uh, City of New Braunfels, expect a delay right now. We have two accidents SAPD is currently working on. First one being on the access road of, of IH-35 North, right, Judson Topperwine, but this accident right here is still active. And then just north, we have uh, northbound I-35 at Judson. It's blocking half the right lane and the shoulder. So uh, expect a delay. Traffic's really going orange there, so it's it's very backed up. Uh, we also have this disabled vehicle. It's a disabled via bus. It is still disabled right now. I see it on Transguide there. SAPD is currently on scene. Let's take a live look at the Transguide. Here it is. Here's that accident I was, I've been talking about. Access Road very bad there and then the main lanes so um, expect a delay if you're going on 35 north at this time take an alternate route um, if you can but right now this accident is still um, pretty <coughs> new it looks like there is some wreckers on scene so that's always a that's always a good note there wreckers are on scene I mean, it's going to get cleared up pretty soon Thank you, Nick. What a mess out there. Yeah, it is a mess. But roads aren't, well, some, I guess you said there was some rain in some areas. So Most of it right now, the, the big area is well down to the south, down along 37, say, near uh, Three Rivers. It's got a couple little sprinkles that have been showing up a little closer to town, so don't be surprised if there's a sprinkle or two, and all it's going to do is just make the roads damp, really. It's not going to be a, a huge rain event. Uh, we do have some cold temperatures, though, and I love this picture. Yes, the days are definitely getting longer. It looks like the... Uh, Sun setting and the moon following in behind it, I believe. Yeah, sunsets now at about 10 minutes after 6. It's a gorgeous picture. Thank you very much. Sunrise is in about uh, an hour and about an hour and 10 minutes, roughly. And we're not going to be seeing too much of a beautiful sunrise this morning, unlike the past couple of days. This is the uh, big area of rain, obviously, down here to the uh, southeast. And here's the few little sprinkly showers. And it looks like there may be a couple of them trying to work their way into town, just crossing 1604 over there by 90 and on the uh, south side of town as well. A few more of those light little sprinkles that almost kind of fizzled out out there in parts of the hill country. And then this is the uh, more predominant area of rain, some light to moderate showers moving across three rivers, heading in toward Carn City, Goliad and moving off to the northeast. And this is where down to the southeast where the majority of rain is going to be over about the next, uh, say, 24 hours or so. 45 in town, 30s hill country, 43 divine numbers, almost identical to yesterday. We do have a little bit of wind chill to deal with. 32 is what it feels like in Bernie right now. 31 lost maples. Wind is out of the uh, northeast of roughly five to 10 miles per hour, a little bit breezier there in Hondo, 14 mile per hour winds, but uh, it's not going to be a huge deal. But with temperatures only in the 50s today, any little breeze is going to make it feel a lot colder than what it is. Plus, we've got all that dampness out there as well, a lot more humidity. So there's the uh, showers and the reason why they're staying down here along the coast and kind of hugging the coast, if you will, this batch of moisture, the stream coming in here from the Pacific Ocean, and that's staying just 
right along in, uh, into toward the uh, Gulf of Mexico. So that's where, again, the majority of the rain is going to be, which computer models pick up uh, fairly well. And as you can see, this one doesn't have a whole heck of a lot even throughout the afternoon hours, maybe one or two showers possible. But again, further down to the southeast and out there in the Gulf of Mexico. We start off with clouds tomorrow and start to clear out by the afternoon, then start to get into more of a, a northwesterly flow. And that's going to pull down some cooler air, well, drier air, and then allow it to us to get much cooler by Saturday morning. It's going to be pretty cold in the 30s Saturday morning. So here's the first little uh, wave moving through here. And then we get into this nice northwesterly flow for the weekend. Great temperatures, cool mornings, warm afternoons, a lot of sunshine, few clouds thrown on in. Monday, a little disturbance moves through, a couple of showers, no big deal. And then by midweek, we've got a much more pronounced trough that's going to move on through here in front. And that looks like it's going to tap into some pretty cold air as of right now by the uh, mid to latter part of next week. So as far as the forecast today, 48 degrees at noon, cloudy, maybe a shower, especially down to the southeast. And all we're going to reach is 50 for a high temperature today. So it is definitely going to be chilly out there. A little bit of a breeze. And again, maybe a shower or two wouldn't count on it, though. Tomorrow, 43 degrees. And that will round up the month of January with no freezing temperatures, only the fifth time in history. And then we start off very cold on Saturday morning, down to 38 degrees, 65 for high temperature. And it looks like another big chunk of cold air comes in here by the latter part of next week. All right, thank you much. Just about 620, 45 degrees. The deadline is here for the mother of two missing Idaho siblings. She is being ordered to physically produce the children today. We'll have more in your GMA First Look after the break. Here's your secret word of the day. Enter it right now on KZ.com for your chance to win a $25 gift card from We Are Circle K. What did we decide on the flyers again? Uh, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. I think we're going to swap over to over 75 years of savings and service. What, we're just going to swap over? Yep. Pump the brakes on this, swap it over to that. Pump the brakes and uh, swap over? That's right. What, instead of all this I've already... Yeah. What are we going to do with these? Keep it in your desk, um, save it for next time. GEICO. Over 75 years of savings and service. How do you think they make Starburst taste so juicy? Starburst? Juice dramatic equation. Super top secret mathematical formula they keep stored inside a safe, inside a vault, inside a volcano. Oh, juice Stratix. Starburst, unexplainably juicy. Liz, you nerd, cough if you're in here. Shh. I took me some XTM for my phlegmy cough. What about Rob's dry cough? Works on that too, and lasts 12 hours. 12 hours? Who studies that long? Mucin XDM relieves wet and dry coughs for 12 hours with two medicines and one pill. In this morning's GMA First Look, a fast approaching deadline for a cross country missing children case. Where are your kids? Lori Vallow facing a deadline this morning to physically produce her missing kids and bring them to authorities. Vallow's children, 17 year old Tylee Ryan and 7 year old JJ, haven't been seen since September. She and her husband left Idaho in November under suspicious circumstances, bolting one day after authorities conducted a welfare check looking for the kids. After other family members contacted authorities, concerned that they hadn't heard from them. Vallow and her husband Chad Daybell were last seen Wednesday in Hawaii. Police tracking them down this weekend, serving them with a court order, while cameras from East Idaho News rolled. Where are your kids? Coming up at 7 a.m., former U.S. Marshal Lenny DePaul weighs in live on this unusual case. With your GMA First Look, I'm Will Reeve, ABC News, New York. We have another fabulous five to report for you this morning. And best of behind the kitchen door. These are San Antonio food establishments with perfect inspection scores of 100 on their latest inspections. And on our list at this hour, 1,000 degree Neapolitan pizza, 11,000 block of Hebner Road. We also have IHOP at uh, 12,780 I-10 West, fairly new location. Mencius Gourmet Chinese, 7958 Fredericksburg Road also aced their latest inspection. So did Magnolia Pancake House. This is the one at 606 Embassy Oaks, right off of 281 at Bitters. Panda Express, 5738 Walsham Road on the northeast side. If your place got a perfect score in the last 30 days, send me an email, bkd at ksat.com. Les? 
Thank you very much, Mark. And your tech headlines, Apple is being ordered to pay up. Apple and the technology company Broadcom have been ordered to pay more than $1 billion to Caltech. A jury found the company's infringed on the university's patents for Wi-Fi transmissions. And UPS is set to deliver self-driving vans. The company is teaming up with Waymo on the project. Autonomous Chrysler minivans will take packages from UPS stores around Phoenix to a facility in Tucson. The vans will have drivers on board. Test run start in just a few weeks. And two pop culture phenomena are joining forces for a Super Bowl commercial. Game of Thrones star Macy Williams belts out the hit Frozen song, Let It Go, while driving Audi's new electric car. The commercial doesn't exactly say why she's singing Let It Go, but the exhaust fumes and gas stations do kind of give a hint. <laughs> Okay, uh, 626, 45 degrees. Spurs snapped a three-game losing streak last night. We're going to hear from some of the players in the win over the Utah Jazz. It may be the middle of the night, but the staff at this place says they always have loads of fun, helping to air out other people's dirty laundry. The goal is for everything to come out in the wash or in the dry cleaning process. Cowboy Cleaners has been handling both for more than 40 years. Inside two buildings on the city's north side, staff members get to work in the middle of the night. They help to get clean clothes back to their customers within 24 hours or less. I spent just a couple of hours with them. I'll show you how they make the clothes make the man and woman in the latest while you were sleeping. Just now waking up, uh, not looking too bad here downtown. We do have a bit of a shake to the camera. That would indicate uh, some wind out there. And we are sitting in the middle 40s as of right now. The big question is, what about our rainfall chances for this Thursday, January 30th? Good morning, everybody. Thanks for being with us. I know we've had some problems on the roadways this morning. Especially on 35 North. We've three accidents and oh my. not even a half a mile radius. It's pretty bad. Really? Out of it. Yeah, another one came out of O'Connor and Crosswinds Way. Hmm. Oh, no. Yeah, it's pretty bad right now. So avoid 35 North at all costs. I <laughs> question, weather related? Possibly? Don't think it, so? It doesn't seem like it. Uh, there may have been a couple little sprinkles here and there, but there's not really a heck of a lot of rain out there. Uh, we do have some down to the southeast. Going to show you that in a second. There is the chance for a couple of showers today, but it's not going to be a, a rainy day. Just kind of cold and, and clammy and just chilly. Cold and clammy. Days. Wow. Okay. Pardon me? Cold and clammy. Cold. Yeah, kind of clammy because we got a lot of humidity out there. And so it's kind of sneaks down the back of your neck a little bit and only 50 for a high temperature today. Cold. Yeah, cold and cloudy. And yeah, it's going to make it feel even uh, colder and a little bit of a breeze out there. This is what it looks like on live cam right now. And we are not going to have one of those spectacular sunrises today. Got uh, plenty of clouds. They are going to be sticking around. We're not going to see much sunshine until looks like uh, probably tomorrow afternoon. 37 up the road toward Bernie, 36 Lost Maples, 45 in town. And wind chill temperatures knock about uh, 3, 4, 5 degrees off the air temperature. And that's what it feels like. We still have a breeze out of the northeast. Now, as far as rain, Obviously, we've got this batch down here crossing over 37 heading in toward uh, Carn City and just a couple of uh, scattered light little sprinkly showers here and there. A few of them trying to move into town, one or two of them in parts of the hill country. Yeah, you may see a, a few showers out there this morning, but the majority of the rain right now and throughout the next uh, about 24 hours is going to be down here along the, the coastal plain. Mold and Mountain Cedar are both on the high side. Updated count comes out in about a half an hour. 48 degrees today at noon and again 50 for a high temperature. That's all we're going to be able to uh, muster today. It is going to be warmer with some sunshine tomorrow afternoon and then the weekend looks absolutely fantastic. Really cold start, especially Saturday morning. Mid 60s, more sunshine. Good looking on uh, Sunday. A couple of more clouds around here. More on that coming up. Time saver traffic right now. So the 35 accidents, are those the only big ones out there? Yeah, the only big ones out there right now. And this one just came out just south of those on th uh, 30 Crosswinds Way and O'Connor Road near the southbound 35 access road. So if you are heading on 35 today, especially north, expect a delay. This accident just came out, not affecting traffic as much, but it is very close to that southbound access road. So if you are on O'Connor, you'd be expecting to see that just north of there on the other side, the other access road, northbound I-35 at Topper Wine. Um, the, that accident is still active from what I can see on the Transguide camera. And then just north of there, the main lanes of 35 at Judson, that accident is still ongoing. It is causing quite a traffic buildup, as you can see with the orange. So 
It is, uh, I expect that to go red any time here, especially as we hit, hit closer to 7 a.m. Let's take a live look at this accident. Here it goes. Access Road is still blocked off there, and uh, main, the main lanes of 35 are still, in the, still feeling the effects of this accident on those uh, main lanes on that and that right hand shoulder. It looks like actually even one lane is blocked now. So expect a delay if you're going that way, and I hope everyone has a great Thursday morning. Mark? Thank you, Nick. Breaking overnight, an arrest has been made in the deadly beating of a 76-year-old woman. It's the first four story we first told you about yesterday right here on GMSA. 55-year-old Michael Kerbo was taken into custody around 1030 last night. He's accused of beating his elderly mother to death Tuesday evening at the Spanish Keys Apartments in Balcones Heights. Investigators say Kerbo took off from the scene that was described as horrific. But again, an arrest has been made. Kerbo's bond set at $200,000. This is a developing story we are still following very closely. You can find the latest anytime at KSAT.com. And new this morning, San Antonio police are asking for your help to identify a suspect involved in a murder from 2011. Police say 40-year-old Daniel Mesa was murdered at the Valencia Apartments in the 7800 block of Callahan Road, which is on the northwest side. Officers responded to a robbery, but they discovered Mesa in an apartment suffering from severe head trauma. If you have any information, call Crime Stoppers. That phone number is 210-224-STOP. Today, the World Health Organization is meeting to decide whether to declare a global health emergency due to the coronavirus outbreak. Overnight, authorities in China confirmed more than 7,700 cases. And we're now hearing from some of the Americans evacuated from China. ABC's Kenneth Moten has the latest. This morning, back on American soil, but a long way from home. It felt great to get back to the States. Patrick Stockstill, his wife and young son, were on board the flight that evacuated nearly 200 Americans from Wuhan, China, ground zero of the coronavirus outbreak. When we first stepped on board, my jaw dropped. I've never seen a plane set up like that before. It was a wide open cargo plane, but had passenger seats in it. And honestly, it felt like something out of a movie. Crews wearing protective white suits greeted the passengers as they landed at this military base in California. Stockstill's wife was forced to leave her family behind in China. I didn't have a choice and I feel so bad that they're still stuck in China. Meanwhile, the number of cases now growing worldwide with at least 170 deaths and more than 7,700 people infected. All but 68 of the confirmed cases are in China. Airlines around the world are not taking any chances, suspending or scaling back flights to and from China, including Delta, American and United. And Tesla is the latest company to close a facility in China because of the outbreak, shutting down its factory in Shanghai until further notice. As for the stock stills, they'll be quarantined until at least this weekend at that military base, along with the rest of the passengers, before they can finally head home to Rhode Island. I asked the first customs guy, I saw where's the nearest U.S. soil I could kiss. Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. And your morning consumer headlines. Federal interest rates are staying put for now. At the first meeting of the year for the Federal Reserve, officials decided to hold rates steady between 1.5 and 1.75 percent. This comes after rates were cut three times last year and despite pressure from President Trump to cut rates further. The uh, rather NASA is retiring its Spitzer Infrared Space Telescope today. It was launched in 2003 and observed 800,000 celestial targets during its 16 year mission. NASA says it enabled the discovery of exoplanets, those outside our solar system and galaxies nearly as old as the universe itself. Spitzer will be replaced by the new James Webb Space Telescope, which is set to launch in the year 2021. Well, we do have to wait another month before Bear County can vote in the primary election, but a big deadline is Monday. That's the deadline to register to vote. To help people register, the Bear County Elections Office will have extended hours this weekend. They will be open from 10 to 4 on Saturday and from noon to 4 on Sunday. On Monday, they will be open from 8 in the morning to 7 at night. If you need more information about registering to vote, just go to ksat.com. There is still time to donate blood to help replenish the dangerous shortage here in San Antonio. This week, our KSAC community partners are holding a blood drive with the University Health System. It takes about 30 minutes, and each donation can help save up to three lives. And if you would like to donate, go to University Hospital in the 4500 block of Medical Drive. The donor rooms are open from 830 in the morning until 5 in the evening today. And if you're an early riser, donor rooms will be open at 7 a.m. and close at 5 on Friday. For more information, go to KSAT.com and click on the KSAT Community tab.
Let's rodeo San Antonio. Just a reminder, the Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive is happening this Saturday. Yeah, just a couple days away. There's still plenty of time to get tickets to the KSAT Corral. Each ticket comes with breakfast, seats for the parade, and many other activities for the whole family to enjoy. Again, the Cattle Drive is Saturday, February 1st, 9 in the morning until 1 in the afternoon. We will also be at the event live all morning on GMSA. So if you can't make it out, you can watch it on GMSA. But if you can make it out, you can get tickets at ksat.com slash insider. Spurs have snapped a three-game losing streak, beating the Utah Jazz at the AT&T Center 127 to 120 last night. Our David Sears was at the game and talked with some of the players after the significant win. Once again, the Spurs stepped up to the challenge of playing one of the better teams in the West. The Jazz actually started the night in third, finished the night in fourth, thanks to that loss. The Spurs have been talking consistency for weeks now. They played with consistency against the Jazz. It was tough. You know, we buckled down. You know, we executed when we need to, got stops when we need to, and got buckets when we need to. Yeah, we came out here and beat a really good team. And, um, you know, that just shows the kind of team we can be with consistency. Obviously against the teams with, you know, less record, uh, worse records than the good teams, I feel like we just not, we don't come ready to play. And, uh, you know, obviously versus good teams, we're ready to play from the jump. So we just got to figure it out, you know, before it's too late and, uh, you know, get on it now. Now it's just a matter of continuing that consistency against Charlotte and taking it on the road with them on that rodeo road trip. With the Spurs, David Sears for Good Morning San Antonio. Yes. Yes, 640 right now, 45 degrees. We all need our clothes cleaned, and sometimes it takes more than a washing machine to do so. After the break, we're going to see some of the folks who dry clean your clothes while you were sleeping. Welcome back. Your time is 6.43. Well, there's a phrase that can be traced back to an ancient proverb, clothes make the man. If that's true, then, then the success of many San Antonians may be due to the hard work of a few who stay up all night to make their clothing look good. And this week's While You Were Sleeping, Katrina Weber takes us into the heart of one longtime local dry cleaning company. It's laundry day for Kirsten Thomas, but then again, every day is. <laughs> the first of dozens of loads goes in shortly after 2 a.m. The time the self-described morning person arrives to work at Cowboy Cleaners. It just, I don't know, comes natural, I guess, but I take a nap in the afternoons. Before the sun is out, she's taking clothes out of the huge washers and dryers inside this building on the city's north side. Her job involves doing everyone's laundry, like a mom of sorts, to customers from six stores. I'm more like the big sister. There's other people that are more like the mom. <laughs> Cowboy Cleaners itself is family owned, an environmentally conscious San Antonio staple for more than 40 years. As the name implies, dry cleaning also is a big part of what they do. It's garment by garment day by day. In George Andrews case, it's actually overnight by overnight. When he arrives after 3 a.m., his work is piled up already. Still, he handles each item for dry cleaning. I'm going to hang that aside. As if it's the only one. It's our goal to make them look as close to brand new as possible that very same day. At an hour while most eyes are closed, they both have to keep theirs trained for any unsightly messes and make them disappear. While keeping an eye out for stains is part of the job, it's some of the other things that they find among the clothes that often comes as a surprise. Credit cards, driver's licenses, um, pocket knives, lipsticks. You know, we found money. We've, if, if you have it in your pocket over a course of time, we found it. Both of these longtime employees say they've also found their dream jobs here doing them while others are in dreamland. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Right now it's 645. It is time to check the roadways. 35 still a disaster. Definitely, Leslie, especially now on the south end of 35 near the AT&T Center Parkway and or at the AT&T Center. Another accident just came out. One vehicle accident in between North New Braunfels and North Walters. It's a one vehicle accident that hit the side of the of the road there. It's uh, currently an active scene. I'll keep you updated on this, but uh, this should be causing delays as it is on the main lane. 
we have this accident O'Connor at Crosswinds Way should be getting cleared up here uh, any uh, minute. Uh, this accident northbound I-35, the access road at Topper Wine, also there. That's also causing a delay. And then just north of there, we still have this accident on the main lanes of I-35 at Judson Road. But look at that backup. You see the red on the screen. If you're on 35 right now, uh, going towards 1604, the form area, I know, expect a delay. It's going to be a pretty long commute there. Let's take a look at this accident. Still active. Looks like the access road just cleared up right before I got on. It was still blocked off. That's good news there. The access road of 35 going towards Topper Wine and Judson. That's good. But the main lanes are still uh, not looking very good. Taking it other parts of the city, 281 and 410 looking great. 35 at Evans traffic starting to pick up just a little bit. 35 at Ben Zingelman. That looks pretty good. And uh, 10 at Frio inbounds and outbounds. There you go. See inbounds looking a little bit moderate. Um, but that's normal. Traffic is definitely starting to pick up all over the city right now. Thank you, Nick. So cold all day today. Yeah, it's just one of those days where you just kind of want to hunker down and, as I always say, grilled cheese and soup because it's uh, a lot of just, fire, watch yeah, a movie, yeah, cook yeah. soup. 50. That's about it. Cloudy skies. A couple of showers out there. We do have a couple more that are moving uh, into town right now, so maybe it's just going to be enough to make the road sort of uh, damp out there. Uh, we are in the waxing gibbous stage of the moon, which means you got a beautiful crescent moon. It is moving in toward the uh, full stage, which comes after. Let me check on that. After um, Valentine's Day, or no, it comes uh, next week. By the way, I'd say, and then Valentine's Day, it's going to be on the uh, waning side, but. Uh, it's a gorgeous picture. I don't think we're going to be seeing much moon out there. We're not seeing much sun. Usually at this time in the morning, we will start to see that glow of the sunrise. But nope, we got a lot of clouds out there. And uh, obviously the big area of rain is down to the southeast. But we're starting to see more of these showers kind of pick up that are moving now in toward Von Orme, right along 35, maybe a few of them into town here and there. So there could be a couple little damp spots on the roads, uh, a sprinkle here or there. Most of obviously most everybody's not seeing anything, but uh, just enough to make the roads kind of damp this morning. So something to uh, to keep in mind. And then the uh, more widespread area of rain down around three rivers heading in toward Carn City, and that will continue to work its way up to the north. And it's uh, kind of a stream of moisture coming in here and hugging the coast. And that's why the majority of the rain is down there to the southeast. Temperatures are well, actually a few degrees above normal here in town. 43 Randolph, Hondo, Divine and mid 30s in the hill country. Wind chill, though, it's not bad. I mean, it's not like we've got really, really strong winds, but just enough to knock off a few degrees. Plus, it's that damp cool out there. So it's uh, it's one of those days where you wish you could throw the blankets back over your head. But nope, got to go to work, got to go to school. There's the uh, stream of moisture coming in from the Pacific Ocean across the mountains of Mexico. And again, it's kind of hugging the coast, and that's why that's where the majority of the rain will be, which uh, computer models are indicating. Just a couple of scattered showers here and there. If at all, like I said, most of us, I don't think are even going to see any rain today and throughout the rest of the afternoon and evening. Most of it stays down there along the coast by tomorrow. Uh, we're going to start to clear out somewhat morning clouds, some sunshine in the afternoon. And notice this kind of northwesterly flow that's going to be pulling down cooler as well as drier air. So that's going to set us up for a pretty chilly morning on Saturday, even though tomorrow is going to be cold as well and, and this morning, but will be a bit cooler on Saturday and more sunshine in the afternoon. But today, nothing but clouds, 48 degrees at noon. Again, a shower is possible, but not very likely. And then 50 for high temperature. That's it about so anywhere from 10 to, 4 to 15 degrees below the normal high temperature. Tomorrow we start off cool again and then you make it up to 61 degrees in the afternoon. And on Saturday it's looking pretty nice. Nice cold start for the KSAT Corral party. Good viewing party for the Western Heritage Parade and Candle Drive and then 65 for high temperature 42 Sunday morning and then up to 70 more clouds on Sunday. Mild starting off next week. Another uh, looks like fairly decent front's going to move through by the end of next week. And if you haven't heard, Saturday's perfect opportunity. Come meet all of us. Yep, the whole crew is going to be out there. So come say hi. Nine, so you, nine you to guys one. Gonna be at nine to one. Yep. Fiona and I are broadcasting eleven o'clock, and then we're going to just follow the parade and meet you up. So save me some biscuits and gravy, please. I'll well, try. Do our best, but oh, we're no. making no promises. Yeah, are we? Oof, we'll try them. Thank you, Mike. It's exactly 651, 45 degrees. Tomorrow on GMSA, a look at some of the big stories going viral this week. We have you covered in case you missed them. Outside with live cam, starting your day with GMSA. Heavy traffic on 37, looking downtown San Antonio, Texas on this Thursday. We'll be back.
Good morning. Coming up right here on GMA, the latest in the search for those missing Idaho siblings not seen in months. Now, today is the deadline for their mother to bring the children forward. Their grandfather will join us right here on GMA. So you answer the call to come donate whole blood, but have you ever stopped and thought what actually happens to the blood? Well, in honor of Blood Donor Month, University Hospital is opening their doors to their processing center and giving us a backstage look to what happens to the blood this morning on GMSA at 9. Let's check traffic at 6.55. What is happening on the roadways? Yes, so the access road at 35 uh, in Judson is clear. That accident is clear. However, another accident came out from on 35 near the 18T Center Parkway. That one's still active here. It looks like SAAPD is on the way. A uh, one vehicle accident. We still have this accident, O'Connor at Crosswinds and just north on the main lanes, uh, O'Connor at Judson. You can see that red there. Traffic is very, very heavy. Thank you, sir. And look outside. We're not seeing the uh, glow of the sunrise this morning. Unfortunately, lots of clouds around here. There are a couple of showers. 44 degrees now here in town. Some 30s in the hill country. A little bit of a wind chill. Feels like the 30s around most of the area. The majority of the rain is down there to the southeast, but we do have those few little sprinkly showers that are star starting to now work their way into town. So a couple of damp spots on the roads today. 48 degrees at noon. 50 for a high temperature. One or two showers. Not very likely, though. And then tomorrow we start off with the clouds. Some clearing in the afternoon, 61 degrees. The weekend now, once again, is looking very nice. Cold morning, 38 starting off Saturday morning. And then we get up to 65. Plenty of sunshine with a few clouds mixed in. And then more, uh, more clouds on Sunday, but up to 70. All right. Thank you. And thanks for being with us, everybody. Make it a great Thursday. We're back for GMSA at 9. We'll see you then.